58 out here this morning. It feels awesome. We're going to have a high in the 60s today. We are headed to the Transportation Museum to say, see the J611 steam engine. And it's going to be a great day. Tuck says he's liking this cool weather and he promises to be on best behavior while we're gone today. <laughs> Don's got Jules pulled out and ready to go. Let's go on an adventure. Amen. I'm ready. Let's do it. Let's drive an electric car to see a steam engine spew out some soot. That's right. <laughs> Open glove box. This command is not available yet. Well, let's get right on that. Not really? Go on. So, um, we're headed to the North Carolina Transportation Museum today. So, North Carolina Transportation Museum says it's 91 miles. And... Actually, when it recalculated, it decided it's 127 miles. It's going to take us an hour and 56 minutes to get there. Um, we should be there just before 1 p.m. And Don may or may not follow exactly what Jewel says to do. Don's got on his fancy J611 shirt. You'll see that later um, from a prior visit. So the J611 is a steam engine. It was restored um, in part between the Virginia Transportation Museum that owns it and the folks here at the North Carolina Transportation Museum in Spencer where they have the roundhouse and all of the guys yeah. that repair these types of engines. So I would say there's a really good cooperation between Virginia and North Carolina with this particular engine and it's been down here to visit quite a few times. Um, they it's, also, they'll use it for an excursion between here and there uh, in the fall to see the leaves. We've almost taken that. It's a little pricey. Um, plus, it's better if you do that overnight um, and that complicates things. But anyway, the um, this is one of the last steam engines. This is like, this is a streamlined steam engine. Um, it's one of the later ones that was ever built. Um, it could go, uh, you know, it's one of the trains that could do pull. They liked it for passenger car service because it could do 70 miles an hour all day. Because uh, it has great big traction wheels, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, eight feet diameter traction wheels are humongous. This thing is huge. It weighs um, right at like 480 tons. Uh, almost a million pounds, something like that. I was going to uh, add that they used the J611 as a fundraising for the museum since they restored it. It's like the big pull. It's the things that one of the things that gets people over there to really come back to the museum. It's just a really good draw for the museum. Um, Don and I did go on one of the excursions with the North Carolina Transportation Museum over to Asheville and back a few years ago. Got there at oh dark early in the morning and got back late at night. They drove us to Asheville, pulled us over to Asheville with one of the, one of the engines and then um, we got to walk around and get something to eat and then we came, came back because they have a lot of restored Pullman passenger cars and that kind of thing too. So that, it was a lot of fun when we, when we did that. Um, yeah, I've been going to the North Carolina Transportation Museum since the early 90s. I mean, it's been around for a long time. Obviously, the roundhouse is from the um, turn of the century. But um, they've really come a long way over there in the cars that they've restored and the buildings that they've restored and the things that they've added to do over there. It has Thomas the Tank Engine in the fall for the kids, so several times when the boys were little, my reason for going was the Thomas the Tank Engine uh, weekend, but um, it's a really great place to go. And they have things there besides just trains, even though it is the former Spencer train yard. Um, they have uh, some class, a classic car exhibit, and they have some um, Eastern airplane, one of the original airplanes from Eastern Airlines, and some other um, transportation too. So it's not just about trains, but all the transportation in North Carolina. Is 
so uh, we took Jules today. Don asked me which car. Yeah, I did. And um, I'm still thinking folks are really interested in the Model Y, so that's primarily the reason why Jules instead of Ruby. Yeah. I mean, for us sitting up here in the front, I mean, me in the passenger seat, it's about the same. Um, we, with either car, we would need to stop uh, one time to supercharge today. Either on the way there we need a little juice or on the way home we need a little juice. Uh, so we're thinking we're just going to come through Greensboro on the way back. There's lots of ways to go to and from the Transportation right. Museum and it only varies by 5 to 10 miles yeah. depending which route you take. And um, So anyway, we've got lots of options today. There's even a level 2 charging spot down near the Transportation Museum. And Don had thought about plugging in while we're down there and using his unicycle to come back to the transportation museum after dropping me off and going and plugging the car in but uh i told him i'd rather have him with me and just walk around and have fun and not you know it would take him 15 or 20 minutes to do that yeah, and it's uh, like two 2.2 miles away there is no charging at the museum and this has been something that we have noticed with several north carolina state uh uh, not private but public museums they don't have even though it's a place you'd likely to go and stay a long time they don't have any charging and I, I think that's very disappointing uh, but of course I guess once electric cars get popular then there's going to be fist fights at the charging station so um, you know maybe just avoiding that is, is the right answer I don't know I mean, somebody tell me if you had, let's say, six level two chargers at the museum that you're likely to stay at four hours, and you have you get 2,000 people a day through the museum, or 2,000 cars a day through the museum, uh, are you really going to have people cooperate? And, you know, everybody. So I guess. It's like Electrify America. I talked to uh, Wayne. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't remember Wayne's last name, but he said they have changed their philosophy about at work charging and for apartment dwellers. When they first did the settlement phase one, they were wanting to work with landlords and business owners to put in level two charging at multi-family dwellings, you know, apartment buildings, and also at uh, businesses. Well, they didn't have a lot of success for that. It didn't go very far, even though they were basically going to do all but free or free level two charging it. They got very few many landlords and owners, to uh, property owners to sign up. So they've changed their philosophy. Now they feel the correct way to handle multifamily and at work charging is you just put in uh, near, in the case of apartment complexes, you know, in the, the neck of the woods, maybe not at the complex, but very close to the complex, you put in a DC fast charger. And the same thing at, at the business, you put in a DC fast charger. And you simply, uh, put cars through that DC fast charger or the apartment dwellers come over to the DC fast charger and charge uh, instead of uh, overnight they just go there and do it for the 20 minutes they need and, and get done in fact he said for uh, businesses they recommend you actually have a valet uh, you know that you basically tell people hey all these cars uh, need to be charged today and you have the guy, a guy plug in the car and you know just go and uh, it sort of made sense because uh, I can see the cost of putting in a DC a DC fast charger is probably better than uh, trying to juggle oh everybody wants to charge overnight and oh by you know there's five times more cars than there are chargers then you're gonna get people gonna get all mad so I, I have to say, if there's anything about the Model Y would change, obviously having a heated steering wheel would be good, but even more important than that, I think I like Ruby's leather steering wheel better than this um, 
I don't know, vegan or whatever, synthetic, man-made material. You know, the seats, the material feels I soft. Like it soft. I like it better than leather, let's say. But the steering wheel is just, I've still, it still feels synthetic to me all the time. It never feels like it's um, um, wearing in. You know, Ruby's steering wheel just feels like an old friend. Uh, you know, comfy. This thing just feels like it's antiseptic. Yeah, the thing that bothers me about the Model Y steering wheel isn't that it's not quite as beefy and isn't so much the feel yeah. of it, but there's a seam at 6 o'clock. Right. There is a seam on the bottom at 6 o'clock, and I don't like that seam when I'm making turns. It's rough on my hand. I, I like the smoothness better down there. That's a part of the wheel my hand touches, and I'd prefer there wasn't a seam there. Yeah. I, I, noticed, I noticed that. Well, there's plenty of videos out there on how to swap steering wheels. <laughs> so, the one in the Model 3 was leather, right? Early Model 3s. Early threes. Model 3s, yeah. yeah. And it's the same wheel, essentially, yeah, but, so. Um, if it, look, if, it, if they offered a leather heated steering wheel for the Model Y or Model 3, I, it's, I think the early days of the vegan steering wheel if you had a model 3 with leather they would swap it out for about 600 or 650 bucks if they did that offer the leather one for 650 bucks if it was heated i'd probably spend it go up to tesla service and have them swap the steering wheel out yeah we had a loaner car that had this heated steering wheel in the winter t one time a model s and uh I fell in love with the heated steering wheel. The winter package is the only option yeah, we didn't we get. Up. Only option we didn't get on Ruby. Well, we didn't get performance, but you know, in this 100D, the only other box we could have checked is winter package at the time, which would have come with the heated steering wheel, and we didn't do that. Now it's standard. Right. Yeah, the winter pack is not a separate thing anymore. But that, right. I mean, it's not a big deal. But yeah, I enjoyed it in Ruby. I enjoyed it in that loaner car. I would love to have it in Ruby. Yeah. We stopped at the Walmart in Siler City to use the restroom, and wouldn't you know, they got blue Tesla Model 3s. Five Model 3s and a police car. And, and one convoy truck. Yeah. We hit pay dirt here at the Siler City yeah. Walmart. Yeah, don't look for Model 3s here. Not here, but if you need convoys, there's five left, four five, left. Yeah. yeah. Well, we got here and what's the first thing we see? The J611 going on by. People over there, they stop to check out Jules. Well, we are at the Transportation Museum, so just check out all forms of transport. Well, we have left ourselves just enough time to get over to the other side of the museum where the 611 is now uh, sitting after its little excursion here around the Spencer Yards. So we're here at the Roundhouse, the Bob Julian Roundhouse. It works. 
Uh, Don said we have to go to the check-in over here, so I detour. Steam jets blow the coal in the fire. People say it's an automatic stoker, and I say no, it's automatic as long as you do it. Fireman controls the rate. The harder the engine works, the more steam it's using, the more water you have to feed in, the more coal you have to put on the fire to keep the, the fire burning hot enough to boil that volume of water, tremendous volume of water. Yeah, so how much water? You said a ton every 10 miles, but... Uh, a ton of coal every 10 miles. That's what we use for the purpose of sure. estimating our fuel. Guesstimate, yeah. And the water, uh, 200 gallons a mile. 200 gallons a mile. Wow. So we have wow. 20,000 gallons in the main tender. We carry an auxiliary tender with an additional 25,000 gallons to extend our rate on. Wow. So, uh, we, can, we can make uh, one lay on our water for a typical excursion and then take water out of the Cool, thank you. He said for now they don't plan to take it back to Roanoke, which is the location of the Virginia Transportation Museum, if I didn't say that correctly earlier. He was saying that they cannot get it in the roundhouse here unless they remove the tender. That it's too big, that the Southern Railway, which used the uh, back shop here to repair their uh, their engines, um, didn't have anything as big as the J611. Yeah, Don has some specs on the back of his shirt. 35 tons of coal, 22,000 gallons of water, it's big. This is a working roundhouse. And uh, I have been out on the platform while they move it. They actually sell tickets so you can stand out there with a tour guide and be on it while they move. If you're here at the right time at the right event, you get to watch them take engines in and out of the roundhouse. But as he said, the J611 will not really fit. Yeah, it just barely squeezes onto the... Turntable. We're just waiting our turn in line to go uh, inside and pull the whistle. Don's over there. Again, again. Yeah, a lot of people going to be tooting the whistle, so. Tired of it by the Bring it on. Nah, not going to be tired of it. I walked down here to the other end just to get a little different perspective. When you take the uh, museum train, if you come to visit and you buy a train ticket, it kind of goes out this way, maybe a half a mile. And then through the whole train yard, and then where we saw it go under the bridge earlier in the opening scene, and then out about a half a mile over to the main track, and then it backs back up. It's uh, cool to do, especially if you come on a hot summer day and you just want to take sit for a spell. All of a sudden it started making some additional noise. It's our turn! So that lady's been doing such a fine job of wiping down the railing, I think I'll use it. Howdy! Hello, welcome aboard! Thank you very much. Oh, wow. Have you ever been in here before? No, no first time. Oh, I get to sit over yes, here. Yes, sir. You, you hop right over there on the engineer's seat. Uh, you're going to have to get my picture over here, sweetie. Okay. I'm going to have to play like I'm an engineer. Is this the, anything important? I'm not going to mess with it. No. Just put my hand here. Well, if you move it just a little bit more, that's the injection seat. Okay. <laughs> that right there, that is the train brake. Oh, that's the train so brake. So you have a train brake, you have an independent, which is the locomotive brake. Okay. These are your sanders, so you put sand on the road. Okay, yeah. Got this it. is a rail wash. After you put the sand down, you can wash it back off. That way the rest of the train don't have to run down. Yeah. Okay. You have your bail. You have your injector. That's, this is one of the ways of putting water in the bowl. Okay. And you see, if you've ever noticed down there on the ground, when you see water coming out beside us, and then it makes that you know what? Yeah. That's what he's doing. He's running the injector. Okay. So you got your water glass. You can see I see it. Sight glass there, yeah. About a half a glass. Yeah. Then you got your power reversal. Right now, so it looks like right now the way that everything's lined up, it, 
it wouldn't be able to go it'll be either way it'll it go. will it will yes. okay so when you push that forward it changes it pulls that up. I, I remember there's some kind of a there's, there's, mechanism that there's, yeah, there's, there's, rotates it up a little there's, bit. There's, there's valve. Yeah. And, and that also controls like your RPMs. Okay. And then the further you get back to center, the higher RPM, the, 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 it will be like being in high gear in the car. Okay. So when you're down here in the corner or up front, that's low gear. And as you get faster, you pull it back. Okay. And that takes the, when the locomotive is and then you start yeah. That's part of what you're changing. Okay. It's like your car. Like I said, if you sure. leave it in first gear and wind it out, it's one. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. the same thing. Okay. So then you got your throttle, but okay. you pull it back All right. to make it go. So you're at the throttle, Donnie. Yes, <laughs> There you go. I'll get your picture in a minute. I'm videoing. I'll get your picture in a minute. Very cool. And then these are the cylinder cocks. When you see us first pull off and all the steam comes out from yeah. underneath, okay. that's, that's clearing the moisture out of the cylinder. So right. you don't crack nothing. Don't, that's right, because water doesn't compress. Right. Steam compresses, water no, don't compress. Water does not. When you're blowing the water out is what you're doing. Okay. Then you shut this off, and then it's, it's full power to the cylinder. Okay. Yeah, but it's, what they say a steam engine can pull a load it can't start, and a diesel locomotive can start a load it can't pull. pull. Right. That's right. Yeah, because it's that getting them going, a steam engine going, that's the, that's the trick. That's yes. where it's really hard work on it. Well, I knew you guys burned coal up here, but it's hot for a 65 degree day. I can't imagine oh, what it would be at a 95 degree day it's, up it's, here. It's warm. I mean, when you're moving, there is some air coming through. Here. Right. Yeah. All right. But on a cold day, it's still not warm in here like you think it is. Okay. All right. So well, I'm probably standing right in front of the heat. I mean, at the, in the absolute, I'm sure over here on the side, yeah, this is not so bad over so here. The thing that comes that, the up. coal comes up through. This is the stoker. Like an comes auger. Up. Yeah, like it's an so auger, like screw. Stoke, stoker screw is the proper name. Stoker screw. Auger is, is on the is on the pole. Okay. Well, well, stoker it screw. Well, and, and I call it stuff like that too. Okay. That's an auger. What it looks like an auger. No, yeah, it's, it's a stoker screw. Is the stoker proper screw. name? Thank you very much. Remember that. You're trained now, I'm Donnie. Trained. Well, it's it's like people will tell you it's automatic. It's not automatic. It's mechanical. Right. You have to turn it on to make it make work. it go. If it was automatic, it would do an exception. That's right. It would figure out. Oh, I need to run a little bit. Right. And 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 it. But that's and all the engineer's job. Exactly. Yeah, there's, there's, there's no computer on no, it. No, no, no. All right. Go for it. There we go. You give her a hoot, girl. Ready? One more. That's my girl. She's a hoot. I missed that. Do it one more time. One more time.
I'm really glad we got to come at least once in 2020. Uh, I don't think there's any years really we haven't come at least one time for some event. And uh, there's a lot of volunteer hours that go into restoring these vehicles. A lot of guys that really care about bringing a smile to a kid's face. Those that are interested in preserving and teaching history. It's, uh, it's a good thing here. And they have all of these interesting vehicles in the roundhouse. I have pictures. One time they used to have a caboose when they weren't so busy all the time. They'd let the kids go in and play. And I think some people abuse the privilege. And you don't get to do that anymore. But I remember sitting in a caboose for a couple hours one afternoon while some interested children played hide and seek, played train engineer, used it as a jungle gym, you know, getting up in the top part and then coming down. So, and there are historical markers here that tell us what all of these engines are. And I've spent hours in here taking pictures of engines. I guess they've pulled that out. That one's empty right now. They really haven't been open this year much, you know, since everything went on lockdown. And they've been open for like two weeks. Yeah. We follow them on Facebook and such, emails and that kind of thing. So that's how Don knew about the uh, event today. Don says this is a derrick that they would use to uh, get cars back upright if there was a derailment. So this is the actual derrick, but the derrick car was always uh, accompanied by the boom car. And of course the boom car allows the boom to hang over and it carries all the cables and the things that you're going to need to facilitate lifting. But it also gives it a place to for that boom to hang over. Don's really having a good time studying this piece of equipment. Behind Don there is an Eastern Airlines flight simulator. A, a real McCoy. Uh, right there baby. Yeah. We may not have one of the uh, shuttlecraft here or any Enterprise aircraft as in Star Trek named Enterprise but uh, this museum has uh, got a lot of stuff including over here a is this one of the replicas of the Wright brothers plane or yeah there's three or four in the state you got to look at what you're looking at here redoing the visitor center at Kitty Hawk which is where the real one is it was in the History Museum in downtown Raleigh for a short period of time, yeah. So I tell everyone that comes through North Carolina on a trip, there's two places in the state you ought to stop. If you're coming through on 95, stop at the Scotland Neck, uh, Sylvan Heights Waterfowl Park, the bird park up there. Yeah. If you're coming through on 85 down here closer to Charlotte, you got to yeah. stop at the North Carolina Transportation Museum. Right. It's only five minutes off the interstate. Yes, it's very close. Six dollars for adults to tour. That's I would right. say minimum three hours yeah. probably yeah. to really see it. Yeah. Um, but for six bucks, you could stop in, use the bathroom, walk around for a few minutes, right. and then head on down the road. That's right. Don't pass it up if you come through North Carolina on 85. It's well worth your time to use the bathroom and get something to eat here in Spencer. That's right. So here is a model of Spencer shops. You can see the roundhouse. You can see the uh, back shop, that really big building where they worked on the trains. You can see the switching yard. This is the whole kit and caboodle here. Johnny, this clip's for you. Mr. Don says this is a 16-cylinder diesel engine. What would this have come off of? A train? Yeah, this would be off of a locomotive. Folks in this part of the country are familiar with Piedmont Airlines as they flew out of Charlotte as their hub in the southeast. Yeah. Not so much out west, though. 
So folks in California may not have heard of them. Yeah, we take a lot of our freedoms for granted, but Virginia Lane had to sue the airline after getting married. Her contract said she couldn't be married and um, the Equal Opportunity Commission and her lawsuit uh, had that rule removed. And I guess uh, she got her job back. A lot of people come and they don't take the time to walk all the way around the roundhouse and on the back side here is where they actually do all of the maintenance and restoration and sometimes you can see some really cool stuff happening. Yeah, Don talked about us having been on an excursion and um, they have to keep a good number of passenger or Pullman cars uh, in good working order so they have a place to seat people when they want to go out on trips. And this one looks like they're uh, repairing it, restoring it. It's amazing what they can do. Here's a picture of it from the side. You can see here that they have a sandblaster for small parts. Don said that uh, passenger um, car looks like it's ready to be painted. You can see that they have uh, put paper and tape up on the windows. Don said this is the business end and this is where they do all the machine work. Yeah. Vertical milling machines, lathes, all kind of presses, drills, yeah. And the museum's owned by the state but they're also um, in conjunction with the nonprofit and a lot of the work that goes on here is volunteer. Kind of like taking your car to uh, one of those bays at Jiffy Lube where you uh, drive over the oil pit. Only this is on such a larger, uh, grander scale here for a locomotive. We've been in this building many times before. Um, there is a hospital car. There is a luxury um, passenger car. There's a mail car, a mail car. Yeah, this is the mail car. Fascinates me every time. The rail network. In 1915, that's what it looked like. Pretty fascinating. They've done such a great job with this exhibit. about throwing the mail that is the catcher arm and one of the bags and uh, this uh, car and that arm uh, started uh, in 1869 and the last RPO catch was made in 1971 so that's over a hundred years of using these arms to uh, deliver mail to non-stop towns all right here's a hospital car I asked on um, what year, I'm sure we'll see in a minute. Some information that talks about when this car was in use. Wow. Can't see that good because of the glare, but that's some of the old electronics. 
leaving a massive lake of destruction and absolute terror. So this is what this car looked like. That's how bad a shape it was in. Fully restored inside and out now looks awesome. to be unexpectedly and violently pierced when the Japanese bomb Pearl Harbor. All donations to the museum. And they just had the plastic up here so kids and people don't do stupid stuff, but... A faith which will live 15 beds uh, on this side, I'm sure it's 15 beds on that side. And so began America's now, Korea. in World War II. It was a time of great sacrifice. Great so 62 of these 89 400 series cars were shipped to Korea during the Korean War. They were also used for a prisoner of war exchanges. But there was another place where heroes reigned. The they think this car was actually in Korea. So it has a rich history. Started in World War I. Really fascinating. Oh, so here was a little kitchen area. got spit on by the water <laughs> so they have a nighttime photography session out here tonight and uh, they're gonna be moving stuff around for the photography session so for years and years and years we would come and you could only look in the glass for this building you couldn't look inside. they were trying to They were trying to raise money to restore it and uh, have places for the things that were stored there to be put on exhibit. And it's been open a few years now and that's just awesome. Wow, this building just never ceases to amaze. The metal inside structures, I've taken so many pictures of it over the years, it's just fascinating every time. Now, I used to drive a 1976 Sedan DeVille. Um, it had a 126 inch wheelbase, I think. And this car is very similar to that car, although I think it's maybe slightly lengthened in the, se in the center. Yeah, it's a little. But uh, that brings back memories. And they have some of our North Carolina Highway patrol vehicles. There's horse and buggies in here. There's boats. Can't have any place at the museum where there's not a train. Yeah, Don and I are in that big back shop building. There's no one in here but us. And this building is huge. Yes. And we are taking a load off for a minute because we've been standing for what, three or four hours over here now, waiting in line, walking around, and it just it yeah, just kind of felt hours. kind of felt nice to just sit down for yeah, a minute. Take a load off. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can see the crane here. It was behind us after we walked into the center. So these big girders up there are not just for looks they actually allow the crane to move things the length of the building not the best place to come for farm equipment but they do have a couple of old restored tractors and they have a fire truck day every year where they have lots of fire trucks from all over the state come and uh, they have a small sample here on permanent exhibit too Fire truck day is a ton of fun because on top of hearing trains you get to hear the firemen sirens and horns and whistles and yeah the kids just go ballistic it's so much fun big kids and small kids and I guess they're restoring this airline aircraft over here a Piedmont Airlines craft looks like they're actually working on it in here getting ready to paint it so that's cool. I want to walk to the other side here. There's a couple of old cars that are interesting looking. Hey, there's an older model of JB's truck. <laughs> I 
watch your feet here. Studebaker. Oh, they got an Edsel over here. Right, isn't that what this is, Donnie? An Edsel? Plymouth. Continental. Imperial. This Cadillac over here is what really caused me to walk around. I had to come check it out. El Dorado. And then some uh, buggies too. Wagoneer. Pretty cool. Yeah. Well, I really like this mint green, dark green paint job on this New Yorker. So if I were gonna take one for a spin, it also has the best tail fins of all the ones in here currently. So if I got to take, well, I don't know, this Chrysler over here is pretty cool too though. So why did I think it was a Fiat before that was really stupid? Yeah, I'm thinking now that I see the tail fins on this one, the more chrome and the larger the fin, the more I like it. Ruby makes up for it with wings. She doesn't have tail fins, but she has wings. <laughs> I remember when the interstate was cram packed full of Carolina trucks. Not anymore. Cherryville, North Carolina, it says. So Old Dominion Freight Line was founded in Richmond, Virginia in 64, but they uh, were also associated with Thomasville and High Point in North Carolina. That was something I didn't really know. So many vehicles, so little time. I think of Kyle and wonder which one he would want to take for a spin. Whichever one's the fastest or he can off-road in the best, right? Yeah, there. That would be good for off-roading. Let's go. I'm ready. <laughs> Not to be outdone, there's even a school bus over there. So they have a special Blackbeard Queen Anne's Revenge exhibit. I guess people may not have actually gotten to see it too much because of them being closed, but... <laughs> well, he's right in time for Halloween. I think I would say I'm glad we didn't come here just for this. Right, but it's okay along with everything. Exactly. as we head for Jules that uh, this last uh, cars here are auto haulers, our car haulers.
So there's a Camaro back there with a blower, you said that's called, Donnie? Yeah. Supercharger. Jules isn't worried. Jules has got this under control, not to mention we're in city limits and it's a 35 mile per hour limit here. So we found our way over to the charge point charger, which seemed like it was farther than two miles. It was a really beautiful scenic drive past Victorian houses. Um, I'm sure Don could have gotten back over to the train museum, but it wouldn't have been the smoothest of unicycle rides ever. That's right. It, 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 it did seem further, but of course we were doing 20, 25, 30 miles an hour. So, you know, but it was 2.3 miles and it was every bit of 2.3 miles. Well, there's the real train depot. Yeah, I agree. I think it's legit. Complete with your Southern Cheer Wine mural. Yeah. <laughs>not going to plug in but there's a charge point charger <laughs> questions get in there we the miss bottom. kyle Hopefully and Alyssa. well we'll rewatch it when we get home a lot of videos hi guys yeah. <laughs> one lap and battery day is this week where you can watch live with us on inside evs youtube channel if you're not subscribed to inside evs us that's the name of the channel i do all the videos for them as well and uh, when is the next road trip? Well, we have some shot. My dad has a Model 3 standard. So the story here is evolving. We're going to start back at the beginning. I said, hey, we're on that stretch of road where we saw our first Tesla. Right. And I'm trying to remember if that Tesla we saw was why we were over this way. To it must have been the train museum. It must have we been the had train Absolutely. It was only one of two reasons, the train museum or Carowinds. Yeah, but it was, Carowinds was 17 right before we got Ruby. We already had seen, drove a Tesla, so I don't think it was 17, I think it was 15. We did go to Discovery Place one time in Charlotte, maybe? Well, I was with you and I don't remember Discovery Place. Right, I'm thinking it was the train museum. We were on our way home from the train museum, I-85 North, coming out of the Lexington area. Yeah. So just north of the train museum and we saw, uh, I think it was a Model titanium. S. Yeah, titanium. It was titanium, yep. yep. So, nice, nice memory. Don was like, oh, there's a Tesla, pretty all excited. I go, yeah, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> At that time, I, well, I didn't even know what it was. I mean, he like said it to me like I was just supposed to like, right. you know, yeah, that right. quickly changed for me though. Oh, very yes, quickly, absolutely. very quickly changed. Well, that's when we started talking. I mean, yeah, I don't, it, you know, kind of rippled out because at the time they were so expensive. You know, I, I just that. Uh, but then, you know, Elon tried to, he did the 70 kilowatt. He did the, um, uh, 75 he did this you know he did all these gyrations to, to get the selling price down and this he basically did all that and then he said okay if you want a 60 kilowatt that could be upgraded to 75 by software you need to buy it by the end of March 2017 he, he was very explicit about that so that's what caused us to go take a test drive go take a test drive yeah don exactly said right. we should just make sure we don't want that 60d model s instead of the model 3 right. if he's going to discontinue that's the lowest price model s that's right. we should go drive it and then the steven up at tesla he's like you need to drive the model x yes. and the s while you're here today <laughs> and that was all she wrote really for both of us it was. It, there was no don didn't want anything about getting in and out of that model s from the very beginning it was too low to the ground for him pretty much yes absolutely and, yeah and, and i wanted the wings and that was all she wrote yeah. i would have been i'm willing to get it out of the s for the luxury of driving the s no problem for me that's not that low it's not like the roadster yeah. god don and i either one of us can't get it out of the roadster but um, right. Yeah. And then it was just, you know, once I got over that shock of how much it was. Um, but Stephen said something. It, is, it was a simple thing. But he said, Don, you're just going to have to get over it. <laughs> and I did. Did he know who he was talking to when he said that? Uh, well, you know, what Not it was. Not quite. Well, let's see. Classic. I've never paid that much for a car before. I don't know. I, mean, I never thought I'd drive a car with 140. 
thousand dollar plus car. You know, I, all those kinds of things. Yeah, we just, thought my Honda and Dodge GMC yeah. were expensive. Yeah, I thought <laughs> like forty thousand dollars from my GMC was like, oh my god, I cannot believe I spent that much money. The guy was waved, and uh, <laughs> I waved back. Uh, so anyway, that's the fourth person today yes. outside of Wake County that's got it excited about our Tesla. We need to right when we got off there to go to the Chick Fil A. There was a car in front of us. And the kid turned around like two or three times. Yep. And was giddy because he knew there was a Tesla. I could tell the way they were behaving that they knew it was a Tesla. Right. Well, I definitely can tell that we're not in Wake County today. I mean, even the people in Fuquay don't get excited about the Tesla anymore. But there's been multiple people obviously excited about the Tesla. And I don't think it's just that it's a Y. I'm not even sure they could tell you it's a Y. I think That's it's... Right. It's just a Tesla and they're excited. Yeah. Don's glad for a chance to practice his newfound I'm not going to miss the Greensboro supercharger right. navigation. That's right. <laughs> He so, did good. That's exactly right this time. I didn't screw it's it up. Screw me. See, we got one B. Battery very low. <laughs> Nine percent. Just teasing. We don't need to be here we're, very long. Well, we're with that X, but that's a performance X, so it's not going to be a 75. You don't want to be charging next to any 75 Model S or Model X because they only do 360 volts or something like that. And so that clamps your voltage. Hmm. So you, not only do you pair, pay the price for being with, uh, pair, uh, sharing a stall, you're crippled because the voltage can't go higher than whatever they're, they, they're doing. Okay, mm I remember Bjorn talking something about yeah, that. Well, Kyle explained it to me too, and he, uh, when we were in Ash Asheville for the Blue Ridge Parkway, and I, I felt the, I felt it, so I, I know what it's. There like. goes the Model X. So Don's figuring our yeah. uh, charging's gonna increase here. Yeah, we're no longer sharing. We couldn't go down on the end because there's people waiting to use the air. Yeah, Don got out unplugged, replugged, and then we started getting a decent um, charge rate. So now we'll be out of here pretty quick. It was ridiculous what we weren't getting there for a minute. So twice Don's got out and unplugged and replugged because the charging rate. Uh, we were charged the first time the car left, the Model X left. So we were on the B side of the cabinet, the 3B. He was on 3A, so he left. Right after we plugged in, I mean, we've been plugged in maybe a minute or two at the most. We were charging at like 65 kilowatts, and I sit there for another minute, two With minutes. With a battery pack at 9%, yeah. 10%. And it wasn't going up. So I got out, plugged, unplugged, and replugged, and it went up to 130 kilowatts or so. And I, I went in and to use the restroom. I came out, it was down to like 103 to 105. And then this Model 3 pulls up and plugs in right next to us, and it immediately dropped to 72 kilowatts. I mean, I was watching, it was like 102, and all of a sudden it was 72 kilowatts. Well, he didn't like it because he realized he screwed up and plugged in on, into a used supercharger when... Cabinet. Cabinet when number four over there is wide open. So he moved. So when he moved... It didn't go back up to a hundred and something kilowatts. It stayed at 72 kilowatts. It's like, well, that ain't right. God, it was like at 40%. So I got out, plugged and unplugged, and it went up to 130. And it's starting to taper back, taper off. The handle's not hot. It's warm. I mean, it, it, it's not uh, ambient temperature, but it, it, it's, it's barely warm to the touch. So it's not the handle. The handle's fine. And, and 115 kilowatts it's at fine. 46 is yeah, yeah, it's all, not bad, but you know, 70 at at 46 is is I think is incorrect. So it was worth getting out, plugging and up, replugging.